You are listening to lawwithdenise.net, the best law podcast for A-level, undergraduate, GDL, and master's law students. Your host is Denise, your experienced law teacher sharing knowledge on various areas of law, including contract, torts, the English legal system, and criminal law. Understand the law better and learn the skills you need to get the grades you need. Hi, welcome to lawwithdenise.net. I am Denise. In this podcast, we are exploring the following two questions. The first one is, what is a legally binding offer? And the second question is, why did the court say the statement made by the counsel to Mr. Gibson in Gibson and Manchester City Council was not an offer? So let's start with number one. So what is a legally binding offer? Now, a legally binding offer is an offer made by the offerer, which is clear and specific, and also one which demonstrates the offerer's intention to be legally bound by the statement. So what that means in practice is that if, for example, you are selling a product or a service, and you make a statement indicating your intention to sell this product or service, you need to be absolutely clear about what you are selling and for what price and the, and the terms on which you are selling the product or service. So you have to say, I'm selling this mic, for example, for 50 pounds rather than I'm selling this mic. Additionally, you have to demonstrate that you have an intention to be legally bound by the agreement. So that means you have to demonstrate that you are serious and you know that if something goes wrong, you could end up in court. So you need to say that I intend to sell you this mic rather than I may sell you this mic tomorrow. I may be prepared to sell you the mic. So this is what the court is looking for. The statement needs to be clear and specific, and also there needs to be demonstration of intention to be legally bound by the statement. So then you might be thinking, well, how does this work in practice? Why would there ever be any cases in which the courts need to look at whether or not an offer is legally binding or not? <clears throat> well, the courts sometimes need to examine statements to determine whether or not they are legally binding offers because sometimes parties are in dispute as to what was agreed upon. Or, as we'll see in Gibson and Manchester City Council, sometimes parties are in dispute as to whether or not a contract had been reached, whether or not an agreement had been reached. And an agreement can only be reached if there is a legally binding offer that was accepted. Now let's have a look at the case of Gibson and Manchester City Council. So Mr. Gibson wanted to purchase his council house from the council and he was in he received the letter which said the council may be prepared to sell the property to him for £2,180. At first, Mr. Gibson wasn't in agreement with the price. So he did contact the council and he did say he didn't agree with the price. However, the council said this is the price. And eventually, in March, Mr. Gibson said, OK, um, let's go ahead, right? I'd like to purchase the property. Then it wasn't until in May that Mr. Gibson received another letter. And this time the letter from the council said they would not be selling him the property. Now what had happened was the political parties had changed and the new political party was not interested in selling properties to council tenants. And Mr. Gibson was quite disappointed. And he argued that the council was bound to sell him the property because they had an agreement. Mr. Gibson's argument was that 
the council made him an offer when they sent him this, the letter stating that they may be prepared to sell him the property at the price of £2,180 and that his letter in March was his acceptance of that offer. Hence, a contract had been formed because they had agreement, they had an agreement. Unfortunately for Mr. Gibson, the House of Lords said that letter sent to him which said the council may be prepared to sell him the property was not an offer. They regarded it as an invitation to treat. Now, an invitation to treat is merely an invitation by a party to another party for that party to make negotiations and ultimately to make an offer. So it is not an offer. It is not clear and specific. Now, the statement made by the council was clear in the sense that the price was there, but what was missing from that letter was a word or a phrase which demonstrated clear intention to be legally bound by, by an agreement with Mr. Gibson. Remember the letter said, we may be prepared to sell you the property. And this was what the courts agreed made the letter less than a legally binding offer and more like an invitation to treat. And this is the reason why Mr. Gibson's case failed. So there you have it. First, the explanation as to what a legally binding offer is. Remember, it needs to be clear and specific, and there needs to be clear indication that the offer intends to be legally bound by it. And then secondly, we looked at the reason why the statement made by the counsel to Mr. Gibson was not regarded as an offer, but rather an invitation. To and that was because the statement made by the counsel to Mr. Gibson was not specific enough and it did not really demonstrate an intention to be legally bound by the words in the letter because the letter said we may be prepared to sell you this property at £2,180. So there you go. I hope this was useful. You've been listening to LawWithDenise.net, the best law podcast for A-level, undergraduate, GDL, and master's law students. Your experienced law teacher sharing knowledge on various areas of law, including contract, tort, the English legal system, and criminal law. If you like the content, please remember to like, share, and comment. Thank you.